Hello everybody! Welcome to the DEA User Guide and Tutorial. This video will be split up into three parts. The first part will show you how to install your DEA. The second part will introduce each exam and operation tips. The third part will cover how to set up and use your exam protocols. Let's start with product installation. The complete package of DEA is only 4 kilograms, which makes it convenient to carry around. Now let's open it. The configuration of DEA includes the main body, two types of slit lamp adapters, a wooden case with four lenses and one meibomium gland evaluating tool, a remote camera shutter button with a rubber adapter. The desktop holder and instrument table are optional. There are three ways to use DIA, standalone, slit lamp mounted, and handheld style. If you want to use it in standalone style, first you need to prepare a slit lamp style instrument holder. Connect your DIA to adapter A with the screw provided. Then install them on the desktop holder. If you already have a slit lamp, you probably would like to install your DIA on it. Before installation, please make sure there is a screw hole on top of the magnification changer of the slit lamp. First, fix the adapter B on it. Then connect DIA to the adapter B with the screw provided. Next, install the shutter button on the joystick of the slit lamp with the rubber adapter. Now you are ready to go. When DIA is not in use, simply move it to the side. If you are using it in handheld style, remove the silicone cap on the back and install the shutter button. There are magnets inside to prevent the button from falling out. To obtain high quality images, it is recommended to operate in desktop style. Next, please install the software according to the user manual. Before connecting your DIA to PC, please check the voltage of your USB port. The minimum voltage at input is 5 volts. Now you can connect the device to a USB port on your computer and run the software. Part 2. Exams and Operation Tips To start, you can add a new patient or search an existing record by name, initials, patient number, exam modalities, or patient groups. You can edit the patient information, modify patient group, and add treatment records, then press Save. If you want to review history records, simply double-click on the patient name or the Display Mode buttons in the upper toolbar. You can save a record to your favorite folder by clicking on the Pin button so next time you can find it easily. It is also possible to delete multiple records together using the multi-select function. To start a new exam, click on the I button on the left to enter the main interface of DIA. The DIA workspace consists of sidebar, dashboard, exam list, and quick access area. The left sidebar contains patient profile and history records. The dashboard gives the basic visit history of the patient at a glance, including the total number of visits, records, and treatments. In the middle of the interface, it shows all exams can be performed with DIA. And on the right part, there are three quick access buttons for different exam protocols. We will cover this in part three of this video. According to DOES 2, the diagnosis of dry eye should follow this procedure. Triaging questions and risk factor analysis 
diagnostic tests, and subtype classification tests. The software interface of DEA is designed accordingly. The exams are categorized into four groups, questionnaire, diagnostic tests, subtype classification tests, and extra exams to provide additional information for clinicians. To evaluate the symptoms, one of the most widely used questionnaires, DEQ-5, is incorporated. It consists of five questions that assess eye discomfort, dryness, and frequency of watery eyes. Simply select the answers and click the Calculate button. The result comes out automatically with suggested grading and is saved to the database. Non-invasive tear breakup time is the time required for the first disruption of the tears and the reflected Placido disc images to appear. It is an indicator for measuring tear film stability. Usually, an NIBUT value of fewer than 10 seconds is used as a cutoff in differentiating between dry eye and normal eye conditions. Install the lens A. Instruct the patient to look at the middle of the lens. Adjust the camera to position the Placido rings in the middle of the image and within the indication ring. Focus the camera on the Placido ring, then press the Capture button. Advise the patient to naturally blink once and keep both eyes open as long as possible. The recording will be complete either after 20 seconds or when the eyes are closed. Corneal staining is an exam used to evaluate the areas of damage on the ocular surface. Typically, more superficial punctate keratitis and confluent patches of fluorescein staining are seen in patients with more severe dry eye. Before the exam, install the lens D. Then blot the surface of the eye with a small strip of paper coated in fluorescein dye and ask the patient to blink quickly. Record the image by pressing the Capture button. Click Analyze to compare the images with Efron grading scale incorporated in the software. The result will be saved automatically after selecting a reference image. Quantitative assessment of the tear meniscus is the most direct approach to study the tear volume. In a patient with dry eye, the TMH value is usually less than 0.2 millimeters. To avoid artificial high readings due to the reflex tearing from other tests, the first test performed during the exam should be TMH measurement. Both lens A and lens B can be used for this exam. Adjust the camera to position the tear meniscus in the frame and focus the camera to get a clear image. Record image by pressing the Capture button. Scroll the mouse to zoom in and measure the TMH manually. Up to five measurement points can be taken. The software automatically calculates the average value and marks it with suggested grading color. Lipid layer has been found to play an important role in the maintenance of tear film stability. Interferometry allows you to observe the lipid layer thickness from the interference patterns of white light reflected from the surface of the lipid layer. Few colored fringes can be seen when the lipid layer is thin compared to when it is thicker. Both lens A and lens B can be used for this exam, but lens B is recommended. Move the device in small increments to the patient's eye until the lipid layer can be seen. Press the Capture button to start recording. Instruct the patient to blink every two seconds and record at least two to three eyelid blinks. Click Analyze to compare the images with the reference images incorporated in the software. It is widely thought that reduced mybum quality and quantity are related to mybomium gland dysfunction, which is the leading cause of evaporated dry eye. Before the exam, install the lens C. Click the upper lid button. Evert the upper eyelid first. 
adjust the brightness by mouse scrolling if necessary. Focus the camera on the meibomium glands, then press the capture button to take photos. Repeat this process for the lower lid. After the acquisition, click the Edit Margin button and outline the lid margin manually. The system automatically analyzes the loss area and grades them with color indication. Eye redness could be one of the symptoms of dry eye disease. Install Lens A or Lens B. Align the camera to cover the entire anterior surface of the eye. Then press the Capture button. Click the Analyze button to compare the images with Efron Grading Scale incorporated in the software. The result will be saved automatically after selecting a reference image. The meibomium glands dysfunction can cause the glands to become blocked and infected. It is suggested to take photos of the eyelid margin before and after treatment. Install Lens A or Lens B. Capture images of the upper and lower eyelid margin. Then click the Analyze button to compare the images with Efron Grading Scale incorporated in the software. The result will be saved automatically after selecting a reference image. Part 3. Exam Protocols The system provides two dry eye screening protocols, four item fast mode and six item standard mode. Simply click on any icon at the quick start area to start exams and follow the step-by-step -step software guidance to complete the screening. The progress bar indicates where you are. If you want to customize a protocol, right-click on the Custom button and then select exams you want to include. Then click Confirm. During the exam process, you can double-click on the shutter button to go to the next step or skip the current exam. There are two dry eye report templates available, four item and six item. Based on each exam grade, the clinician can select the overall grade of the report. Only exams performed on the same day can be printed on one report. You can also select another record from the drop-down list. The color indicator on the side of each record shows the level of grading, making the report easy to read. Hopefully this video gives you clear guidance on how to use the DIA Dry Eye Analyzer. If there is something not covered or you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thank you for watching.